My fucking Uber. God damn it! Hold on, I'm gonna run this really right now. My weird Uber is situation here. Situation involving Pokimane oh. and a creepy employee of a major company, and it's left me feeling the same way I felt when I was a young sprout that watched Inception for the first time, confused. Usually when I'm talking about things on the internet, I like to set the dinner tables to prepare all of you for the meal we're about to consume together, give you like little cliff notes on what the whole thing is about, but in this case, I just can't. My tiny little smooth reptile brain can't fully grasp what exactly happened here. It's such a wild web of wacky, shady, sketchy shit that it's just not computing in my little noodle here. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and start playing some of the clips and do my best to break it down because it's a really interesting and strange case. Someone that I and many streamers have been working with for years, someone who was also employed at a large company in the industry, has targeted and manipulated girls specifically in my community by falsifying a romantic and sexual relationship with me. Now, Pokimane treats their name like Voldemort. She doesn't speak it. She doesn't talk about who the employee is in order to protect the anonymity of the victims. Admittedly, I don't really understand that concept, considering if this is a powerful, prominent figure in the industry, I feel like it would have been a great service to actually name and shame them, so that way people know to avoid them in the future. But I'm not familiar enough with the situation to say for sure if that actually was optimal. Maybe this is the right way of playing it to keep it clean and safe for everyone. I don't know. But anyway, this Sith Lord of Cringe was a high-level employee at a company that was big into the streaming space. Most people are speculating it was a former Twitch employee. And if you held me down and waterboarded me and forced me to make a guess, I would also say it was most likely a former Twitch employee because Pokimane mentions that this person had a lot of connections with a ton of streamers. And there's just not many brands that work with a lot of streamers that uh, like would they'd share in common. So I feel like the most likely answer is a former Twitch employee. And let's just face it, let's just be honest with each other here, all right? There's no reason to beat around the bush. I don't need to serve you syrup on your pancakes. I'll give them to you raw. There are some fucking creepy Twitch employees that have worked there. It's just the facts. This would not be the first Twitch employee to be a weirdo that has abused their power. There have been cases where some lower level employees have done very sketchy things in their position. And this would kind of fit that modus operandi of someone doing something similar. Leaking privileged information he gathered from his job, as well as threatening to harm himself if these girls turn against him. He is well networked in the industry. He knows many streamers. He has helped us with many things. This was someone that we were genuinely grateful for their help. A few months ago, um, a few girls in my community came forward to me with some concerns and asked to speak to my manager. They proceeded to send my manager countless screenshots and videos of their conversation with him, proving the lying and manipulation that was going on. The more Pokimane explains this person, the more I picture them as an unhealthy. This is awful. Unrelated to the Pokimane story. I got like eight fucking cold brews. I literally got like six cold brews from Starbucks because I thought like I'm dying, I need food and the worst cinnamon roll of all time. But it's my fault. It's fucking Starbucks. Let's watch this. I'll blast off and then I'll get back to you want me to watch the Pokemon story? The full story? Okay. We'll wash it up. I'll do personal news after that. 
because I got to talk about trash day still. Healthily obsessed parasocial weirdo reddit fanfic loser drooling all over themselves for a streamer because they're so delusional that they think they're entitled to a relationship with him because they donate money. But in this case, that stalker creep type actually had power. According to Pokimane, this was someone that they had worked with for multiple years now and it actually used confidential information from their conversations to try and manipulate Pokimane's female viewers into liking him somehow. This is where his supervillain plan makes no sense to me. It is more confusing than quantum science. So his plan is to reach out to Pokimane's female viewers and let them know that he is dating and having sex with Pokimane and then fabricating screenshots to prove it in order to what? Like, how does that further his goal of... I think it was just insane, right? Parasocial, insane. Lost his fucking mind. I mean, I don't know. Getting laid, I guess? It, 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 does, it makes no sense. We're dividing by zero, trying to understand what this guy's thought process was. Pokimane explains that he would reach out to the female viewers, inform them of his relationship to her, and then what? Like, how? what, what was his end goal? I don't get it. Like, if it was other streamers, I would almost understand it where he reached out to them to try and, like, form some kind of business relationship. Like, oh, hey, I saw you in Pokimane's chat. Well, I actually... Fuck her. So... You know, you, you can trust me. I know what I'm doing. And I also work at this company. Like, that would almost make sense. And I guess... Okay, well, why should Pokemon when she addresses it, apparently? Essentially, um, someone that I and many streamers have been working with for years... Bro, I have no idea who this person is. God damn it. I'm in Japan. I don't know anything that's going on. Someone who was also employed at a large company in the industry has targeted and manipulated girls specifically in my community by falsifying a romantic and sexual relationship with me, leaking privileged information he gathered from his job, as well as threatening to harm himself if these girls turn against him. To my fate- That's Pokemon? Oh, thanks, man. Fuck you mean that's Pokemon, bro? Yeah. <laughs> this person was always very professional and kind, he is well networked in the industry. He knows many streamers. He has helped us with many things. This was someone that we were genuinely grateful for their help. That's that crazy. Is, until a few months ago, um, a few girls in my community came forward to me with some concerns and asked to speak to my manager. They proceeded to send my manager countless screenshots and videos of their conversation with him proving the lying and manipulation that was going on. So basically, he would reach out to girls that he knew were like in my chat or viewers of mine. He would approach them. And because of his connections with streamers and the company he worked at, he seemed like a very trustworthy individual. He would then tell the girls that he's suicidal and deals with mental health issues, which of course would garner him a lot of sympathy and again, these girls are so sweet. So, of course, they would hear him out. Um, and then once he felt that he gained their trust enough, he would start sharing these photoshopped Discord conversations with me. At, like, he would share it with them, but they were of me and him, as well as making up, like, wild stories about me. He acted like he knew and hung out with me and my friends in person. This is someone I've never met. I've never hung out with them let alone had any relationship with past talking about only work-related things. I did not have sexual relations with this man. He fabricated all of this just to manipulate these girls. Mind you, I'm giving you like the summarized version. Even I haven't seen all the evidence that they sent my managers for my own mental health. Like the girls were kind enough to be like, uh, you shouldn't see this. Like, let us send it to your manager. But let me give you the summary. <clears throat> he laid this groundwork over months and months. Like he's been doing this for basically the two years that I've known or worked with him every now and then, which makes me so fucking mad. Come on, man. <laughs> like, be, be, be real. Be for real, bro. Come on. We're, we're, no... Like, let, let's, let's tone down the joking a little bit, dude. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> no, that person is joking. Guys, calm down, everyone. <laughs> mm. 
It's madness. To know that this was going on, like right under my nose for so long, he claimed that. There's no way. There's no way someone is saying that seriously in this community. Okay, calm down. His relationship with me made him suicidal, and he used this to make the girls feel like they couldn't turn their backs on him and to think that, like, I was an evil person. He told elaborate stories of our alleged sexual encounters in detail to girls that are, like, in my community, things that obviously never occurred. He created fake... Bro, I swear to God, this is why I always say, like... Female content creators literally have the worst experience online. Like, it's not even close, dude. People literally don't understand. Is Ray going to do this kind of video against you for forcing you to make content? Come on, come on, come on. Girls need drama for views while boys need content? What? Okay, I wasn't going to ban you at first. I thought you were, like, making a funny... I thought you th thought you were making funny jokes, and then you said that, and it's like, okay, done. Yeah, dude, I know. This is <laughs> this is another, like, uh, you know, boys rule moment, I think. You know, when you, when you look at a... When you look at a fucking situation where some dude is literally, like, making up elaborate stories about dating a female content creator specifically to, like, get news from their fucking fans, like... It's crazy. <laughs> Chatters are actually being serious about both sides. Wait, what? What? Wait, wait, are you for real? Dude, are you for real? Are you for fucking real? I believe Pokey, but is there actually proof of what she has put forward? There's literally no proof, though, but I believe her because it would make sense. No, no sense for her to lie, but she has no proof. What do you mean? What do you want? What What the fuck? Wait, what? What do you mean we, we need more proof? You don't even know who the person is. Bro, people are literally fucking defending a guy that they don't even know who it is. They're like... I don't even know who the I only know the victim, but you know what? I don't even know who the perpetrator is, but I'm on his side, I think. I'm going to defend this anonymous man. Bro. Bro. Please reevaluate your life, dude. Like you you literally are just riding against women at that point. Like you are on to nothing. Bro is not cooking. He is on to nothing. He's just defending reflexively the perpetrator. Like immediately, you just went and hit the button. You were like, I don't even know who the fucking guy is, okay? Might not even be a guy. But honestly, where's the fucking evidence? I'm like, what do you mean where's the evidence? She's just talking about it. Bro really went and said... I'm on the other side. Don't know who it is, but this side's got a woman. I'm going to be asking some questions. That's crazy. Like. <laughs> Why would she lie about this? Like, why, why would Pokemon just come out of the gate swinging with just a literal fabrication that makes no sense and doesn't, like, that just, like, doesn't even shine in a, like, it doesn't even show her in a positive light. It's not, like, fun to talk about these sorts of things, man. Oh, this is awful. That's crazy.
Anyway. I don't think the guy said he's on the other side. He just wanted screen grabs. Yes. But in a situation like this, where, like, no one is even being named, and for legal reasons, this matter is being dealt with privately, and from what I understand, it has already been dealt with privately, when you go, I want to see the juicy shit, I want to see the comments that were so gross that, like, even Pokemon wanted to shield herself from, you're either A, a pervert, or B, reflexively disbelieving women. Does that make sense? Like, it, it, it doesn't make any sense in this situation. Sometimes both, maybe both. Because, like, you got to think, why would someone come out like this? Why would someone come out and say this stuff, right? Like, what, what motivation could they have? Either, A, it actually happened, okay, and, uh, you know, uh, usually in circumstances like this. Um, oh, fuck. That's why my nose was hurting. I was like, why the fuck is this? Shh. Fuck. I'm sorry. <clears throat> my nose ridge on my fucking glasses was just like literally tilted. Um, like you have nothing to gain to come out and talk about this sort of thing. It's usually just to get the word out so that if there are other victims or if there are other people that like this fucking weirdo actually, uh, you know, talk to, you know, they, there's, you just know, you just know not to continue c c conversing with that person. You know what I mean? It's about managing the harm, right? That's it. Um, like you, you engage in, uh, harm management regularly on a daily basis without even thinking about it. Like at the top of the hour, there's a little bit of harm reduction. You subscribe, right? You subscribe for $5 or for free with Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Um, but why wouldn't you want others to know who this person is to avoid them? Probably legal reasons. That's the reason why they're not mentioning it. Anyway. Um... Here's the three-minute ad break now. Delivery way off. Seem to be kind of drunk. Man, shut up. Fake screenshots as evidence, Discord logs. When he and I would talk about work things, he would then take that conversation and, like, edit the second half of it to, like, look inappropriate or weird. I don't even want to go into details because it's really fucking gross. He would use, like, inappropriate photos, like nudes that weren't of me, and he would send them to the girls and say that it was me. He also leaked confidential information to these girls to gain their trust. For example, let's say he worked at a company uh, that sponsored me. And if like we did an activation together, he would tell the girls how much I made to like make himself seem like, oh, I know so much and I'm so important. And, and he would mix that with like in information that he makes up. That Afterwards, is so... he would then try to develop romantic and sexual relationships with these girls after gaining their trust. He would hit on them, offer to fly them out, meet up in person, buy them gifts, ask for inappropriate photos of them after sending them fake inappropriate photos of me, ask for personal information. Like It is truly some of the most disgusting and deplorable behavior that I've ever fucking heard of. And you guys know I've seen some shit. And it was also really bothersome 
to me to find out about all of this and be told, well, yeah, there's really not much that you can do. There's no legal course that I can really take, even though this has caused so much harm to so many people. Luckily, the one thing that we have been able to do is that it prompted an investigation at the company where he works. And he was let go once the investigation completed. And I am so extremely grateful that one of the girls was willing to talk to the investigators, because if she wasn't, there would have actually been nothing that we can do. He would have kept his job. He would have been able to maybe go on and do much worse things. Even now, it frightens me to think about what he might do next. Even if he has kind of like, since the investigation ended, kind of disappeared. But I'm sure he'll find something else to do. So I, I don't know who he may try to manipulate in the future, even though I'm not going to let it fucking happen anywhere in this industry or anywhere near me. I'll tell you that fucking much. I also want to add that using mental health or suicide as a way to manipulate others or threatening to harm yourself in order to control someone is absolutely not okay. And if anyone out there ever experiences this, please do not face it alone. Please reach out to someone. If these girls didn't end up talking to each other and piecing together the fact that he was lying, I genuinely, like, I don't know what could have happened. <laughs> also, I blasted off while we were watching this. Uh, you know, it's all fucked up. After this story is done, after I cover the story, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to my personal news. I know I fucked up my, like, uh, lineup and how I normally do my content. Um, because, uh, I'm really, I'm hungover and I'm tired and I'm trying to do everything. I'm trying to do everything I possibly fucking can. Okay. Absolutely murdered the vibes. Please acknowledge my burrito flex on you. Hassan, I literally got the double meat, half steak, half chicken, add guac, chipotle, burrito in hand. Good job. I'm happy for you. Okay? I'm glad that that happened to you. It should have happened to me instead. How about that? I feel I've spoken about the situation pretty matter-of-factly thus far but to those that care for me and to those in my community i want to share <clears throat> my perspective a bit <clears throat> or do i <laughs> but basically it's because like one of the reasons that i wanted to talk about it was in hopes that it could help me and the girls that he manipulated like move on from this I'm hiding the chats. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I want to just get through this. And I appreciate you guys a lot. I just know seeing <laughs> even like kindness will just make me fucking cry. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Yo, this shit seems to happen all the time. Um, and yet, you know, people still run around being like, being a woman in this industry is so easy. Being a woman in this industry is so easy. You don't understand. Like, you, you don't get it. If anything, people literally will, like, justify this kind of action to be like, well, they deserved it for being a woman in the industry. And at a certain point, you got to realize, like, well, this stuff keeps happening. Like, literally non-fucking-stop. It's just that it, it, the, the frequency is endless. Um, at a certain point, you have to realize, like, okay, well, one, maybe being a woman in this industry is not easy, okay? And two, perhaps, um, you know, it's just uh, it's happening, and you feel that way because uh, maybe you just don't like women. So, yeah. I wanted to talk about this in hopes that it could help me and the girls that he manipulated move on from this. When I first found out 
which was a while ago, I basically like fully went numb and I just went into like problem solving mode. Like how do we remove this person from the position of power that he holds? How do we help the victims? What do we do to make this right? As I mentioned earlier, it was quite a while ago and the investigation took so fucking long and the whole time I had to pretend like everything was okay so that he wouldn't find out about it. And even that was just so yucky and uncomfortable. And my numbness slowly turned into anger. Just anger that someone would use my name, my reputation, my trust, and the trust that these girls had in me to then manipulate them for his own benefit. Jesus Christ, dude. It's just so fucking disgusting. It's more than disgusting. It's evil. <sighs> also, what the fuck is up with guys trying to pin women against each other for their own benefit? Like, you couldn't just hit on people normally. You had to make up a fucking sob story and fake a relationship with me and try to make me look like the bad guy to try to get other girls to fall for you. Like, what the fuck? It's giving delusional and desperate. Yeah, that shit's crazy. That's why, like, the other day when we were watching that fucking TikTok of the guy who's like, um, how to be a fucking mass surveilling freak psychopath on, uh, you know, in e five easy steps. And, and people were like soying it and watching this fucking dude. I was like, God damn, brother. We are not all right. We are broken. Like we are <laughs> we're a broken generation. It makes no goddamn sense. Men see women being successful and liked online and they feel like they got to take back that power and then they do shit like this and it works. It pushes women away and it traumatizes them. It's fucking horrible and it won't stop. The modern version of keeping a photo of a supermodel in your wallet and saying, yeah, this is my ex. She got hit by a bus. Okay, that's creepy and gross, but there is a there's a layer that's different here. It's like trying to fuck like the, the specifically the fans of that model. You know what I mean? And all, while also simultaneously working with that model. You know what I mean? That's the difference. It's like... It's, it's like far worse. I mean, I get the analogy. But this is like stalker shit. I mean, this is... By the way, this has literally happened to Pokemon before. By another person. You know? The, the whole like Predmeister shit. So this is like this. Oh, oh my God. It's just, uh, yeah, yeah. It's so cursed. It's so cursed. It's so fucked. Do you know the guy? I don't know who it is, but I mean, I'll find out soon. I've just, I haven't really been paying attention to anything else that's going on because I'm too busy petting dogs and cop and dreaming about petting capybaras and shit. So I'm not, I'm not like tapped in to everything that's happening. <sighs> and then my anger turned into sadness. But I held on to the thought that everything would be okay after the investigation completed and it did finish and he was fired and I planned on never talking about it and just letting it pass. But with time I realized like that feeling of satisfaction or healing never really came. I don't feel like I'm over it. He got fired and disappeared, and that's all. Like, it doesn't undo the trauma that these girls endured over months or years, or the distrust that this incident has forced upon me. 
and I, I went to these girls and I told them how I was feeling and I was kind of relieved to hear the same thing from them, like a lack of closure, a weird feeling of uncertainty, which is why we wanted to speak about it. And they said that they hoped that hearing me talk about it publicly would make them feel better too. On top of that, the off chance that there are any other victims out there hearing this, they would know that they can reach out to us. And sorry. <laughs> I really hope that this does make us feel better because up until now, it has just felt like emotionally tiring work. Like helping with the investigation took weeks. I've had to warn so many people in the industry of him because there were so many people who worked with him or knew him. Figuring out how to handle this situation, like gathering evidence, trying to provide adequate support to the girls. I'm sorry, I keep <clears throat> brushing up against my mic. It probably sounds horrendous. Looking into whether he will still be a threat or harm to others, or if he's transferring to another company nearby and repeating this behavior by trying to leverage the experience he had at the past company or working with me. Like, I don't know what this person is capable of. And I'm not going to lie, it just pisses me off. Like, how come someone else's shitty fucking behavior is now my responsibility to bear? Like, I understand life's unfair, but this just feels fucking egregious. Also, it just fucking blows my mind that someone I worked with and trusted for years, who showed, like, such a kind and understanding and respectful face to me, who knows in detail the shitty stuff that female streamers have to deal with, the sexualization that we're constantly dealing with... And, you know, put up a front of, like, being one of the good ones. And actually was helping us and was also doing all of this behind the scenes. Like, it's just a very hard thing to mentally reconcile. Also, finding out someone that you worked with for so long has, like, crazy, fucked up sexual fantasies about you is indescribably weird and not only was this something that like he was thinking or feeling he went as far as to fabricate false evidence to trick other girls into validating these delusions like it's so insane and gross you can't make this shit up and ultimately why is there so many weirdos on twitch like what is it about streamers that draws in these pathetic human beings first of all that's a really interesting conversation to have. Uh, we always, people always ask this question. The only reason why you always think about Twitch as like a, a, a cluster for fucking weirdos is because in, on Twitch, it's, everything is accessible. Like the content creators are accessible and that's it. This happens to women everywhere all the time. I know it seems fucking insane. But the only reason why you hear about it is because it's happening to Pokemon. It's happening to other people, too. It's happening to other women. And not just on Twitch, but, like, it's happening to the woman working at the fucking grocery store. Okay? It's happening to the woman, uh, you know, packing meat on the aisle in the, in the frozen goods section. It's happening to women at school. It's happening to girls. It's happening to your sister. It happened to your mom. Okay? And it's probably going to happen to your daughter in the future. Like, it's the unfortunate byproduct of being a woman. That is literally how this works, which is why people are always like, wait, wait a minute, what the fuck was so weird, it's so creepy, it's so gross, this industry specifically is so shitty. It's like, no, dog, this industry is shitty, but it's not even just industry, it's just everywhere. It's an everyday existence. This is why women talk about this stuff all the fucking time. You know what I mean? That's how it works. Incredibly online people veiled in their anonymity and shielded by their monitor. They feel incredibly safe and committed to these acts. We just catch the ones who are loud enough, confident enough, shameless enough to get caught. Plus, yeah, we hear about it when she has a platform, but it happens every day all the time. I've said this so many times, man. I get I endure a fuckload of cyber stalking and, and insane shit, right? 
Here, I'll give you a great example. I'm in Japan. I'm having a great time, okay? I was informed that, like, some fucking psychotic stalker three hours ago went to my VOD from two days ago where I'm making a joke about how white people love going to Japan because they experience xenophobia for the first time. That's a joke from three days ago. This motherfucker went through a VOD from three days ago to post this on the subreddit specifically so that he could farm hate on me, okay? Just an absolute mentally ill, psychopathic, cyber stalker. Who the fuck would do that? It's very clearly a joke, like very clearly. I, I guess, is that, does someone gift him already too? And then you look at the comments and it's like, you know, only a white guy would say ra experiencing racism is cool. Yeah, no shit, that's the point, right? Like, that's the whole point. Ha ha, hating minorities is funny. What a bad take. Like, they're fucking losing their minds, right? Rich man, rich white man spends a week in Japan and still becomes an expert in Japanese culture and reality group who receives the most racism in Japan as other Asians. Like, none of this is like, I'm, I'm not making a serious assertion. Like, this is very clearly a joke. Like but unfortunately, and this is a very real thing, okay? This is a very real byproduct of being online, is that like a lot of people on Reddit cannot read nuance when they just decide someone is a bad guy or when they decide that they're like very upset about something. That's insane. That's an insane thing that I have to endure. The reason why I mentioned this is because I just wanted to show you. This is like from three days ago. This is an eight-hour fucking VOD every day, right? I'm in Japan. I'm making content outside, inside, whatever. Eight hours a day I'm filming. This cocksucker went to a fucking joke from three days ago, cut it, specifically posted it to LSF so people will yell at me about how I'm an anti-white racist. You can suck my nut, okay? I'm white. Shut the fuck up. As a white guy in Japan, if I make a joke about how, like, white people love Japan because they experience racism for the first time, you don't get to fucking yell at me about it, okay? Shut the fuck up. Yeah, I'm going to give one nut, not two. Not both. You can't suck on both of my nuts, you little bitch. Just one. These guys do this shit all the time to me because I'm a politics Andy, okay? That's where it comes from. And I've been enduring this for the the uh, you know for the better half of the past decade right stuff like that there are so many falsehoods uh spread about me all over the fucking internet and it's been going on for you know 10 years this has been happening all week what is this Hassan Piker is seething right now. Wait, what? Why? Dude, why do these people just like constantly think about me? I'm having a great time, man. I'm loving life. I'm touching otters, bro. I think it's weird. I think your weird stalkers go through transcripts of your VODs to search for drama bait to post. It's so weird. Yeah. Anyway, listen, my point is this. I'm living my best goddamn life, okay? And these motherfuckers are still desperate to find something they're desperate to be like no he's having a good time we have to literally go in and like ruin his day fuck his day up you know what i mean so why did i bring up all of this why did i make everything about myself well let me tell you why because for the past for the past 10 fucking years that i've been online i've been doxxed my family's been fucking attacked you know i've been attacked I've been stalked. I've been harassed. People have lied about me nonstop for the crime of being a political commentator whose opinions are spicy and considered controversial by a lot of dumbass Americans, especially a lot of racist Americans, a lot of fascist Americans, and maybe some people who are uh, a little confused and misunderstanding of what's going on. That's still nothing, nothing in comparison, okay? to what women experience on the internet. In general, nothing to what women experience overall, but nothing. It, it, it pales in comparison. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, no. Hi, everyone. I've been recently diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia cancer. I'll be starting treatment very soon. With that being said, I'm not too sure. 
And my body will react to the treatment, so I apologize in advance if my stream, stream schedule isn't consistent. Stay safe. What the fuck? How? Oh, no. That's... That's really sad, man. She's like 20 years old. What the fuck? AML survival with treatment is very high. <sighs> what the fuck? It affects younger people. Isn't leukemia for like... I thought leukemia was like the, the one that's for... Hopefully she discovered it soon enough. No, no, it's not for kids. That's a misconception. It's blood cancer and bone. That's crazy. Blood-based cancer, fingers crossed, treatment goes well. God damn, dude. That's fucking... Jesus Christ. Leukemia is common amongst younger people. Killed my older bro when he was a baby. Best of luck with them with their treatment. Much love. I mean, people are saying a lot of people have made full recovery. Oh, hold on. Fuck. My, my food is here. This is something well, that pertains to uh. my stream, to my work, to my community that I care about so much. And ever since I found out, I can't help but have like a sour taste in my mouth about streaming in general. To know that this was going on right under my nose for like two years, it just made me feel so uncomfortable, avoidant, even violated in a way. Like my trust was entirely violated by someone that I knew and that deceived me and so many others. And even though I know I did nothing wrong and I had no way of knowing, like this was someone I never hung out with, only spoke about work-related things with them, like I did nothing to provoke something like this. And yet, even just an affiliation with me and other streamers and his job gave him enough power to, to manipulate these women to this extent. It's scary, it makes me angry, and it makes me so sad. And I don't even think I trust people easily. Like, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, ultimately it just freaks me out that this is one of the last people I expected something like this from. And now that I know that someone is capable of this, it's like something I have to consider anytime I talk or interact with anyone. It's, it feels like it's like stuck in my mind, like an added layer of distrust. I wasn't even nice to this guy. That's actually something like he complained to these girls about me being cold because when I interact with people for work related manners, like I'm, I'm not going to be like, ooh, ooh, like a heart emoji, like we're talking about work. And so he both complained to these girls that I was cold and also fabricated that we had a relationship. Like it's crazy. And it just makes you feel like, okay, so how am I supposed to go about interacting with men in general to avoid shit like this? Like, how do I go about filtering who's trustworthy or not if you can even be duped for so long? I just can't understand, sorry. <clears throat> I can't understate the feeling of distrust and concern that that has dis like instilled in me and I'm self-aware enough to realize that that's not what I want for myself. 
Like, I understand why people say ignorance is bliss. I want to go back to feeling like I can happily trust people and believe in the good of people. And I want to feel good when I stream, not constantly... Get out of here, your rage gaming. We're competing, dog. Is there a way to prevent shit like this? I mean, I don't know how to. I, I don't know. I don't know how what to do, other than like what we talk about here all the time, which is like, you know, try to educate people on how to uh, behave around women. Yell at motherfuckers who come in and and. Aww. Uh, Fuck, this is a tuna sandwich. What the fuck? I just opened up. God damn it. Fuck. See, I accidentally ordered a tuna sandwich. This is devastating. This is fucking devastating. Oh, fuck. No, I don't eat seafood, man. I don't eat seafood. Oh, it's all good. I got the family chickies. So, it don't matter. Well, the loss in chicky. Spicy. Um, women try to prevent it or mitigate harm by telling each other about it, but that has to remain a secret. Otherwise, those women get targeted and subject to the mass harassment and hate campaigns. Yep. This isn't like 9 a.m. there, law, Bro. Japanese people eat like fucking noodles for breakfast. What do you mean? Like, yeah. This is like breakfast food. Fried chicken. Fried chicken in the morning is like normal. To be fair. I do love breakfast food in America. I think it's goaded. It's the best. But you know what's incredible? Fried chicken any time of the day. worried and so i hope that talking about it openly will alleviate some of these feelings and hopefully make me feel validated a bit <laughs> i want to end this by saying that i truly hey feel also in this video I'm anyone who's a victim of emotional sexual physical manipulation or abuse in any way whatsoever it makes me indescribably furious to know that sometimes the sweetest people, due to their kind-hearted nature, have people take advantage of that and have the most unfair things happen to them. And then they are forced to deal with the undeserved trauma and burden that it causes. But please don't ever feel like you need to handle something alone. Please share your burden with others. Because at least for me, holding on to this I don't know why it made me, like, it made me feel dirty. Like, I was keeping a secret for him. Like, it instead became my burden to bear. And I just wanted to get it off my chest. This wasn't my fault. This wasn't the girl's fault for believing his well-fabricated lies. It's not your fault for trusting someone. It's that person's fault for abusing that trust. I know these girls felt so guilty once they found out the truth. 
because obviously over months it had skewed their perception of me and they did start thinking that I was a bad person. But obviously I showed them my side of the conversation. Heck, as soon as I found out, I screen recorded every single message I ever exchanged with this person because I have nothing to hide. And frankly, they were shocked to see how much was edited. And so was I. It was fucking weird. But I hope the girls know I don't hold it against them at all. He made this it ever extremely believable. And I hope that this is also a learning lesson to everyone out there. Be careful who you trust, especially online. Do your due diligence as much as you can. And don't face difficult decisions or situations alone. Also, don't trust anything anyone says about me online, okay? Unless it's good. <laughs> but yes, I also want to very quickly validate those who experience traumatic things that weren't explicitly categorized as a form of assault. Just because there are no legal repercussions for some things does not mean that it's okay or that your feelings aren't valid. I'm sure there will be people that disagree, and I'm sorry if I haven't expressed myself perfectly today or if this feels dramatic, but I really wanted to do this for me and my community and to warn you guys, and I'm hopeful that in being honest about how I felt as of late <coughs> and opening up about what happened, hopefully it will allow me to once again truly feel like my authentic and happy self on stream and just to help me move past this. Thanks for listening. Yeah, I, it's crazy that like, um, yeah, this dude was just trying to, I mean, I, I don't know why Moist Critical doesn't understand what was going on there. Um, I think a lot, some dudes are just like unaware of how fucking depraved some, some uh, dudes are unaware of how depraved dudes can get. The only reason why I know about it is like specifically because these people are my friends. I see what they go through. And also because like they stalk my ass too. Like, you know, for even interacting. Like I have stalkers from every fucking background, every shape, color, size, all different creeds, you know, all different kinds of political spectrum uh, people. But the ones that are the most unhinged are always ones that are like stalkers that we share. Cause like some streamers just like share stalkers like, and it's literally from uh female content creators are interact with like they're fucking the, the shit that they have to deal with is insane, bro. Actually insane. And it's like, I'm talking like, you know, you need a lobotomy type shit. Like it's just not going to stop. It's never going to stop. There's not really much you can do about it. There's not really anything you could do about it as far as like legal recourse either. Cause they just like are doing it uh, anonymously online with like a million different fucking um with with a million different sock accounts you know what i mean <laughs>